All right, in this one, I'm gonna go through the state vectors portion of my Markov chains lesson. And this comes after you understand how to do Markov chains and the transition matrices. So if you don't know how to do that really well, go back to your professor's notes and videos and you can review my video as well. So the state vectors are another piece of the Markov chain. They have the probability of being in each state of the Markov chain during a certain observation. So up until this point, they've always told us what state we're in. It'll say you're in state two, gonna be something else, whatever it is. It'll give us where we are. This is for when we don't know where we are, but we do know the probability of where we are. So it's written with this X and then it has a vector with each entry corresponding to the state. So this is the probability of being in state one Column two is the probability of being in state two during observation n. So x zero is gonna be your starting or initial state vector. So think about before you do any transitioning, you're in observation zero. And then after that, xn is the state vector after n transitions. So if you were to think about x three for a two state process, it's gonna have these two numbers in it that tell you the probability of being in each state after making three transitions. So this is the probability of being in state one on the third observation. A couple of things to note, these will always add up to one because they're probabilities. Um, so the whole row itself will add up to one. And then they also are not related to the transition matrix numbers at all, which we'll see here in this example. So this example says every night we either cook dinner at home, which is state one, or we get takeout from Siam House, which is state two. If you cook dinner at home on a given night, you are three times as likely to cook at home again the next night. If you get takeout on a, different, on a given night, you are nine times as likely to cook dinner at home the next night rather than get takeout again. So we've seen this before. We're gonna make a transition matrix called P. And we have two states, so it's a two by two matrix. We're gonna look at first, if we're gonna be in coming from state one, so we cooked dinner at home. And then column one is, we're gonna be cooking dinner at home again. What's the probability of that compared to the probability of cooking, uh, going out after cooking dinner at home? And then row two is we're coming from going out for takeout and then looking at, do we cook dinner at home the next time or do we go out again? So let's find those probabilities. And my way to do this is to find the numerators like we do probabilities for probability problems from the beginning of the semester. So if this blue row is corresponding to starting in state one, so we're cooking dinner at home on the night we are three times as likely to cook at home again the next night. So cooking at home again is gonna be located in this corner because we're starting at home and we're cooking at home again. And this needs to be three times going out. So that means if we put a one here, because it's smaller, one times three is three. Add those up, three plus one is four, make that for the denominator. And those are the probabilities for this row. Next, we'll look at if we started by getting takeout, what happens? So it says if we get takeout on a given night, you are nine times as likely to cook dinner at home the next night rather than get takeout again. So for getting takeout the previous night, the next time we have a nine to one chance of getting or of cooking dinner at home. Nine plus one is 10, so our denominator is 10. If this was confusing, go back to um, the beginning of 8.1 and transition matrices. I'm gonna keep moving on. The next portion that says, let's say that tonight you are equally likely to get takeout as cook. Write a state vector to represent the situation. So we're not gonna refer to anything in here because we're not transitioning at all. We're not doing any steps, we're not moving between observations, we're simply looking at tonight a snapshot of what are we doing, and that's a state vector. So 
And let's say we're going to have a state vector. And we know that's going to be a one by two. This first one's a probability of cooking. And the second one's a probability of getting takeout. It says that they're equally likely. So they have a 50-50 shot, which is like saying that they each have one half. So that's a state vector. And you can see that we did not refer to anything in the transition matrix or in order to figure this out. All we did was look at the probabilities for tonight. Okay, so now that we know how to make a state vector, we're gonna look at how to combine the state vector with the transition matrix to answer more complicated problems. So let's say we already have an initial, we wanna know what happens next. So if you remember, X zero is the initial, and then X one would be the next observation. So in order to figure that out, you take the initial, you multiply it by a transition matrix, and that gives you the next observation, X one, because between X zero and X one, we have one transition happening. Let's say we wanted to know what happens in the second observation. That means we could take what happened previously in X1, multiply it by another step, another transition, so another P, and that'll give us X2. In order to turn this into a general equation that we can use for any N observation, we are going to do some algebra. So if X1 is equivalent to this portion right here, can rewrite that as x0 times p times p and then simplify into x0 times p squared. So now you'll notice that we wanted to figure out the second observation and we had to square p. This, if you want some background, comes from the idea that if we're going to start in our initial observation and move to our second, in order to get from here to there, we have to do two steps. So we would use P squared and then multiply it by whatever happened in that initial state vector. And then from here, you can create a general equation. So the general equation is xn, so the state vector at the nth observation, is equivalent to the initial state vector times p raised to the nth power. So let's look at an example of this, and we're going to continue off of what we did up here. It says, today there's actually a 2 out of 5 chance that you will get takeout. What is the probability that you will get takeout tomorrow? So you can see it's asking us to do a step from today to tomorrow, but we don't know what happened today. All we know is that there's a two out of five chance that we got takeout. So let's start by figuring out what we're looking for. We want takeout tomorrow. So if this is today, we don't know what happened and we wanna figure out tomorrow, we have a step in between, right? Observation zero. And this is going to be observation one. So that corresponds to X one is what we're looking for. And we said that our way to figure out what X one is, is to use that equation. So X one is going to equal the initial state vector times P raised to the first power or just P. So now we can solve. First, we're going to figure out what x0 is, so the initial state vector. And we get that from looking at the problem right here. It says there's a 2 out of 5 chance that we're going to get takeout. Takeout was state 2. So that's going to go in column 2, which leaves 3 fifths in column 1, because it has to add up to a total of 1. And then we already have our transition matrix from above. So I'm going to just copy and paste that guy. We're going to multiply the initial vector times P1. So the initial vector 
times P1. And that's going to equal our state vector for x1. We could find both of these values, but we know that we only need one of them. It asks us the probability that we're going to get takeout, takeout of state 2. And this is going to correspond to the probability of getting state 2 in observation 1 which is exactly what we're looking for. So I'm only going to do the math to get this value right here. And if you remember how to do some matrix multiplication, you're going to have to take 3 fifths times 1 fourth plus 2 fifths times 1 tenth. And you can put that into your calculator and figure out that, that equals point one. So that would be your answer for this problem of the probability of getting takeout tomorrow if today there was a 2 point out of 5 chance of getting takeout. I'm going to show you how to check your work using a tree diagram. So if you remember tree diagrams, it was in stages where you have different stages and you have probabilities along your branches you can make a tree diagram with a Markov chain. So I prepped one down here for us to look at. We're going to start here. We don't know if we're going to pick a state one or a state two tonight. It says that there's a two out of five chance we're going to get takeout, which is state two. So that means there's two out of five chance we're going to follow this branch, which leaves three fifths up here. Now for these branches, we're going to look at the transition matrix, which is this guy right here. So if we're starting in state one and going to state one, that's going to be our three fourths. Starting in state two, going to state two is going to be one fourth. Oh, sorry, starting in state one, going to state two is one fourth. Starting in state two, going to state one, is going to be nine out of 10. And then starting in state two and staying at state two is a one out of 10. So here's our tree diagram for this problem. And in order to figure out the answer for the probability of getting takeout tomorrow, we got to think about which branches we want to count. So since we don't know if we're going to take state one or state two, we have to consider both possibilities. So we're going to go down both of these branches. What we do know is that tomorrow we want to look at getting takeout which was state two. So I'm gonna follow this down to our state two options for each of these and ignore the state one option. Next for our branches, we're gonna just do the math of multiplying down the branch for both of these branches. So this was an overview of state vectors with Markov chains and an example of a couple of problems you would do with them. These are simple problems, so you'll have more tricky ones on your web work and on the exams. And also keep in mind that watching me do a problem is very different than you doing one yourself. So make sure you follow along, write it out, but then also test yourself with different numbers and a different problem to see if you can replicate it yourself. Um, hope this is helpful. Come to pass and good luck. Bye everyone.